I have a, I am with COVID. Oh, okay, I think we, uh, we are muted. Okay, now I can see you. Amen. How the honorable Adigan, uh, can you please open your camera? So that we can... <laughs> yes. Hi, uh, how are you? Hello. <laughs> Hi, Rihanna. Are you all right? Yes, I'm perfect. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think we are live, so we can start. Uh, we will get the signal from the brother. We will wait for us two to five minutes. So anyway, uh, brother Jude, just make me a signal to start live session. I think it's live and recording going on. So hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who have joined from the different parts of the world today. And we are really honored to have ama amazing panelists today and we are great to have a great session because we are thrilled to announce the 10th Jinha Mind Matters talk show uh, episode that is designed by Captive and Stimulated Your Mind. And today's topic is very much related to the professional. Uh, maybe you are thinking of the theme of this, today's session, right? The theme is the power of perspective, why diverse teams create the better outcomes. So today we have a great panelist. Uh, I would like to hear the panelist's name one by one. Dr. Rani Lentu, all the way from Greece. She is the Global Educators Team uh, Instructor, Greek Astronomy and Space Company. Greek Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs, GMA board members and training director. Hello, Rani Alentu. Well, greetings from Greece. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you so much. So another panelist of, uh, with us today. So let me share that he is the great Goodwill Ambassador from UK. He's a great personnel and he is a great speaker as well. So welcome, dear honorable Temi Tayo Adigan. So welcome, brother. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. I'm very grateful. It's a great honor to share the podium today with Rene and Limpo. I think it's going to be a great section for us today. Thank you so much to the entire team. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yes, uh, yes, there are the number of uh speak panelists are there maybe they will join soon so we, let's start, get started so first question and so as we all know that you both are uh work in the workplace even you are both are professional indeed so my first question going to my dear brother All right, I think we are back once again. Anyway, so my dear brother, David Regan, I have a question to you that what does it mean for the workplace diversity? What does it mean to you? Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to be part of this panel. Like you all, yeah, like you all know that uh, diversity is not just about uh, a grammatical expression. Gra diversity is all about different individual from different race different color different ethics different background different belief 
coming together for a cause to make a difference, right? Now, that coming together, it's not based on equality alone, but it's based on equity. What that means by this is because when you're looking at diversity, in our world today, what we do is we said diversity to promote equality, right? But the equity is not incorporated into that diversity. There is a limitation and a barrier to, to having the real impact of diversity in the workplace. Now, I will give a, a quick example of what I'm saying. Uh, I work in an organization whereby I'm the only person of color among almost 200 staff, right? Now, diversity, we say that that company is diverse, but it's the people, the mindset, diversity is all about mindset. It's about people, right? And until people see, we see ourselves as we belong to one humanity, that we are, we are bred of one humanity, it will be difficult for us to really achieve what real diversity is all about in the workplace. Thank you. Uh, you're mute, uh, uh, Ambassador Noor, you're mute. Uh, oh, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, fantastic. Uh, well explained. I would agree with you, definitely, because at the same time, we are actually addressing the workplace diversity where equity and equality both need to be ensured. And that is happening for every single multinational organization. So. Uh, yeah, I would like to know from the Raniel Info, my dear sister, that what are the benefits of having diverse team in the workplace? Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, I would like to say that I'm very honored and very happy to be a part of uh, this panel. And I uh, warmly thank uh, Jimha for this great opportunity. Uh, the globalization, you know, of this uh, business economy is uh, adopting shaping new organizational forms and diversity, which go hand in hand with inclusion, have become vital parts of modern business as uh, the benefits of having diverse teams now, diverse team talents especially, have becoming more and more uh, evident. And of course, while it is easy to recognize the importance of uh, the diversity inclusion policy, but of course it can be very difficult at the same time to create and implement uh, um, a similar plan. So when we talk about diversity, of course, it's about uh, what the speak, previous speaker said about cognitive diversity, which has to do with uh, different education, with the class, with different personal experiences or skills, demographic uh, diversity, or what we call internal diversity, and this includes uh, uh, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, age, organizational diversity, which relates to our workplace, to our job function, work location, uh, our status, and uh, uh, what we call worldwide diversity, which relates to anything someone experiences or observes, uh, um, and how how someone see the world, so how um, observes the world around him, how interprets the world. At the same time, we talk about inclusion uh, is when uh, different, different, uh, diverse differences are valued and supported. So this means remove barriers that could prevent anyone from reaching the full potential. So why this is why diversity is important because a diverse uh, workforce is essential uh, for so many reasons. It brings together team members with different backgrounds, with different perspectives, with different uh, learning and communication styles to create a competitive advantage. So workplace diversity. It's not about hiring people from minority groups, or it's not like this. It's about creating an inclusive work environment that values uh, people's authentic selves. Um, there are many, uh, of course, uh, issues such as communications issues, language barriers, or biases or stereotypes uh, that must be addressed, uh, of course, uh, through um, diverse uh, training programs that we're going to, to mention uh, later. But you know that the more time employees spend with one another, you can see that the more differences and um, uh, they, they might start to realize with each other. So if the communication is not channeled properly, conflicts will arise and affect the workplace in a negative way. 
Uh, and of course, uh, diversity can bring a lot of growth to the organization by increasing, of course, the talent pool, by nurturing a broader mindset and revenue. So it can be challenging to manage uh, a diverse organization if uh, someone is not prepared well. Um, so, given this, uh, of course, we have, uh, I forgot to mention, the environmental changes nowadays, because nowadays we talk about climate and entrepreneurship also. What tips uh, that are diverse in terms of ethnicity, of area of expertise, of organizational uh, familiarization, all these are becoming more and more common nowadays. So, work team diversity actually shapes the ways in which team members think and feel about interactions with other team members through their communications, work teams, manage information, uh, the, the, what we call tangible resources, tangible resources that could be managed, could be tools, that could be equipment, and at the same time, human resources, which are skills and uh, efforts, and things like that. So, increased awareness of the different dimensions of diversity should actually sensitize organizations to, to uh, what we call dynamics, dynamics and outcomes which are associated, which are related to a team's diversity. And this uh, recognition that diversity includes differences among different team members in terms of job knowledge, of behavioral styles, of values, this opens up new perspectives, new per perspectives from view problems and um, make it more possible for organization to make uh, appropriate decisions about whether and how to intervene, about how to assess total consequences of any intervention. So we could say that this variety of different perspectives, uh, it's very important uh, for uh, a workplace. Uh, the, this increases creativity because when you put together many people, you can see you can have more different perspectives. You are more likely to get a melting pot of fresh, new, original, and innovative ideas. So we talk about higher innovation at the same time. And according to all, <coughs> to all research rate, diversity in the workplace leads to higher innovation rate. Faster problem solving. Uh, it's something that Harvard uh, Business Review has many, many, you know, articles about this. Um, many research that are presented that how people are able to solve problems faster, faster than when they are uh, working in, in group and diverse teams. Of course, better decision making, increased profits, uh, and uh, this has to do with higher employee engagement because this um, includes uh, more engagement and uh, more communication and more interaction. Uh, better company reputation, this the image and the brand of uh, uh, these uh, companies, and of course, uh, improved hiring uh, results. Uh, <coughs> this is another also, uh, we could say, um, a positive advantage. Um, so I think uh, that we have uh, many uh, reasons uh, to exploit and to leverage um, this um, um, the dynamics of diversity in a workplace, um, no matter the challenges are. Uh, we can we can hear you, Ambassador. No, you are not audible. You are not uh, audible. You are not audible. You are not
Dr. Rena, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Judah has requested that you yes. continue moderating the program. Yes, okay, I can see here. Yes, yes. I can see the, um, the chat box, uh, one uh, uh, very interesting comment that is, says that the research has shown that diverse teams outperform not diverse teams decision making up to 87% of the time. So, um, <clears throat> Dr. Joubert, I uh, would like to welcome you to yes. our panel. Thank you, Thank Thank you so you. much for joining Thank us. You, yeah. uh, would you, you like Daniel. to... <laughs> it's a pleasure and an honor to have you. Would you like to comment uh, um, on this? This has to do with decision making. How does diversity contribute to better problem solving the decision making within a team? <coughs> yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me at this platform. And uh, I'm happy to be here and uh, Rania is there because she's a very good speaker. And she's already talked about it. Yes, diversity, you know, within a team can be, you know, uh, significantly contribute to better problem solving and decision making in several ways. For example, uh, diverse perspectives, because when we talk about the team members with different backgrounds, uh, experiences and viewpoints, bring a wide range of perspectives to the table. And this diversity, you know, can help in identifying a broader set of potential solutions of the problems because they have different abilities and capabilities and limitations so, so if the diversity is there as people from various backgrounds may approach challenges differently and uh, creativity and innovations because diversity uh, can foster creativity and innovation uh, when team members have different ways of thinking they are more likely to generate novel ideas and solutions so this creative uh, creative tension can lead to breakthrough innovations uh, that a more homogeneous group might not produce and uh, improved problem identification diverse teams are you know better at identifying problems from multiple angles because this can lead to a more comprehensive understanding of the issues at hand and a more accurate problem you know statement which is crucial for effective problem solving and uh, cultural competency is there because teams with diverse cultural backgrounds are often more culturally competent. This is a valuable in you know globalized, uh, globalized world as it enables teams to navigate and you know solve problems in multicultural and international context. And uh, it enhances uh, you know adaptability. Diversity promotes adaptability. Team members with the varied experiences and skills can adapt to different situations more readily and better decision quality. Diverse teams' uh, ability to consider a wider, a wider array of options and you know perspectives and uh, tend to result in higher quality decisions. So you know improved uh, you know customer or the you know the user understanding. Diversity in team can enhance its understanding of the diverse customer base because uh, this uh, you know enables the team to make more informed decisions that resonate with a broader range of customers and users and uh, ethical considerations as well because uh, diverse uh, teams can help uh, ensure ethical considerations are you know thoroughly examined in decision making processes different cultural and ethical perspectives can identify and you know mitigate potential so it is important while diversity can offer numerous you know lots of benefits to problem solving and decision making it is not a guarantee of success but effective teamwork in diverse manner communication and leadership are also essential components for you know uh, for the potential of a diverse team so it is important to create an inclusive environment where all team members feel valued and heard as this is crucial for realizing the you know benefits so for example if a, in a hospital a medical team you know uh, you know comprised of doctors nurses and specialists from diverse cultural backgrounds can provide more effective patient care for example a team with international members might be better equipped to communicate with patients 
from different cultural backgrounds, understanding their concerns and preferences for treatment. So this can lead more accurate diagnosis and uh, personalized care. Same in the, for example, in the marketing, because in the marketing department, a team with members from uh, diverse racial, ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds can help develop, uh, you know, advertising campaigns that uh, resonate with a wide range of consumers. For example, an advertising team that uh, includes individuals from different ethnic backgrounds can create cultural sensitive and relevant campaigns and uh, avoiding di cultural in insensitivity or stereotypes and thus promoting the brand's you know reputation so yes of course you know it helps wow thank you thank you dear brother for actually explaining the whole things of the yeah the, my, i we are thinking about a diversity of problem solving and decision making with our team and i do agree with you as well because uh in within my organization in my working days i can see that same why when a problem within a team or within a department the diversified people diversified people actually sharing their ideas views and get the ultimate problem solving with the due time and that is actually happening Thank you so much for articulating all the things and thank you all for understanding and giving time and some technical issues going on. And this is the part of our life. Anyway, thank you so much for uh, giving your valuable comments in the social media. So, my dear brother, I think for him sharing that being from Nigeria. Thank you. Very captivating topic. Of course, it is. And also showing that even research has shown that a diverse team out from non-diverse team in decision making, 87%. Yes, of course. Um, yes, we have another brilliant people, Mahmoud Khan, also focusing the brilliant discussion as always. And the honorable Laurel Married also focused amazing show. Thank you, amazing panelists. Thank you, Global Youth Men who are on Jima. And of course, I would like to give my gratitude as well, Jima for airing this situation. So I will go one by one rather on. So my next question to my dear brother, Adigan, that is, give me some example, a successful company that park has a diversity and inclusive in their hiring practice. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the for that, for that question. And thanks to all the uh, uh, participants that has added a great value to what diversity is all about. I think we just start with uh, D, uh, uh, Dima, which is uh, the first company that we see as embrace diversity, okay? Because looking looking at looking at the uh, GMA uh, board of director, we've seen different people from different culture, different background, different orientation, different understanding, different perspective of life that has come together to build to build Jim Hart as that we are all stand sitting on the platform today to share our voice to the global audience of why we needed to embrace diversity okay now when you look at the europe europe country where i where, where i live apparently now apparently live in united kingdom right and I, I work with one of the one of the largest multinational pharmaceutical company right and uh it's 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 an organization that is that has uh over 16 nations of different color working with the organization and the 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 company does not just only uh give opportunity to people they give equal opportunity depending on the capacity that your capacity your competency and the value you are bringing on board now like i explained the lot the lot last time back in back in nigeria i've worked in an organization whereby uh, whereby we we see people from other nation that is not Nigeria that are rising to the led to the to the role of a managing director. Now, that shows that the company does not just only value their indigenous talent; they also value their external talent. Because when you look at the advantage of 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 diversity, is endless. Now, Dr. Rena has mentioned a lot. Uh, Mohammed has mentioned a lot about it, about, about it, but the major thing that diversity brings is creativity and innovation. 
right? Now, no business in this world of AI can succeed without bringing people from diverse background, diverse knowledge, diverse orientation to succeed in this business world. And for me, it's important, not just for all to talk about diversity, it's important for us to, to bring it to practice, right? As much as we know that the impact and the, the benefit of diversity is endless to impact on, on, on life, on, to impact on mental health, because when you are working in an environment whereby your, your voice is not heard because you are a minority, like, like uh, Dr. Reyna said, when you become a minority within your team, you, the, there, there will be what we call inferiority complex. You start feeling not being useful within that organization. Even if you are the best brain that you are in that organization, as long as you are feeling that insecurity, your mental health starts depreciating. Now, for me, there is various organizations across the world that are practicing diversity, but the clear call today of this conversation is we don't just want organizations to talk about practicing diversity. We want to see it being demonstrated, giving everybody the opportunity to express their feelings, giving everybody the equal opportunity to really bring their technicality, their knowledge, their experience on board to drive innovation, to drive creativity, to drive customer customer satisfaction, to drive to, to drive profit and growth. Okay, because in, in embracing diversity, it helps us to, to build on each other weakness and, and create and create a more a more synergy among among the team. Among, 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 among the leadership team. And also, like I always tell people, diversity is not just about sex, about male and female. Now, you have seen a lot of organizations that have put in their, in, their, in, 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 in their slogan that diversity is our watchword. But when you look at the board of their directors, out of 10, you will only see a single woman, a single woman in the board of their director. Now, that is, diversity in theory, not diversity in practical. Now, but what we are seeing 50% 50, 50 women and 50% men in the board of director, that shows that in real sense, they are practicing diversity. I will give a, a very quick example before, before I round up my section because of other people to contribute. Now, we have an organization in, in back in Nigeria and Africa, they call it uh, uh, Tony, Tony Elumelu Foundation, right? To, 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 all of us know, all of us must have heard about Tony Elumelu Foundation. Is 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 a, a man, Tony Elumelu himself is a man that talk about diversity every time. And when you see the board of his directors, you will actually see that he embrace what diversity is all about. The 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 the, the, uh, the um, group managing director of Tony Elumelu is a female. That gives us a clear indication that is a leader that walk the talk, right? And my challenge to everyone that is watching us today is whether you are a leader, whether you are a political person, it's important to ensure that we create not an not inclusive society, but to create an inclusive society with equity, equality and equity being embraced. What does this mean? Now, equality is, we give everybody a chance for equal competition for the, for, for, because we are pricing diversity. Now, when we are setting the, during the period of in, interviewing for the, for the senior management role, we'll be looking, no, you are a woman. This position is not meant for a woman. This position is not meant for a man. Now, what we have, we have created a kind of a, a, a barrier from everyone to succeed. But in a diverse work environment, everybody, whether small, whether old, whether black, whether white, has equal opportunity, provided they are bringing value on board. And I will all encourage everyone across the world that is listening to us today, diversity is not about theory. Diversity is, diversity is all about embracing a culture for transformation. Thank you.
Wow, wow, what a constructive discussion you have shared. Yes, of course, in my workplace as well. And, you know, I'm working international NGO, so I know the NGO culture is quite different, even the culture also focusing and maintaining the workplace diversity, equal opportunity, equity, and some other things. But trust me, for the gender team in around the world, in around the, any international organization, the national organization, for the gender team or gender department, you always get the female, not men. I don't know why. I asked the gender coordinator of our organization, why always women? I mean, the majority of women or the 90% of the women work in gender department. Why not male there? So actually, uh, my dear honorable, uh, just give me feedback in a uh, in such a way that you will make the difference. <laughs> this is the way. Anyway, then that's what we actually are focusing that practicing and implementing is not the same. We should not think about the practicing, we should do the implementation. So thank you so much. And yes, uh, with all of you, I would like to share that the, my dear honorable brother shared such a way that we are thinking about what is diversity means and which organization actually follow the diversity. So there's a number of international organization we we actually know very well, like Johnson and Johnson, uh, who is working uh, in around the world. The one lakh four thousand plus employees are there. Even you use the Mastercard, right? Mastercard is also the forty-seven countries people are using this. Even the Mastercard, that is the one important thing. If one dollar for the men definitely the same dollar for the women as well even they also consider that each of the country will get same grade of salary you know uh when we are working at the expired level uh, the national uh, employee will get the less amount that expired who is working from the other country uh, from the another country so this is the kind of differences that are going on so yes so the lot of question are there so i'll not go further so I would like to ask the next question to the Maria, the Rania Lampu sister, that what are the own challenges or barriers to creating a diverse team within the organization? Mm -hmm. uh, first, I would like to add also uh, Lenovo, the global PC provider, which actually uh, says it's based on uh, the whole campaign, it's based on the concept that different is, uh, is better. And uh, they evaluate the GPT, uh, you know, policy practices, including uh, no discrimination, um, workplace protections, transgender inclusive healthcare benefits, and all these things. The same happens with Cisco, again in the technology, uh, uh, which actually receives uh, best of workplace awards for women and uh, LGBT members and all these things. Uh, so I think that many companies are more and more becoming uh, more inclusive and uh, they embrace uh, diversity in their uh, policies. So yes, of course, uh, achieving and maintaining diversity in the workplace has many challenges. First of all, we talk about slower decision making because uh, sometimes different perspectives, opinions and ideas, of course, uh, are useful for innovation, but they can slow, uh, they can slow down decision making and progress. Uh, so if this happens, uh, this way we can um, make space for this to allow more time uh, for teams to consider different ideas, to brainstorm, uh, to debate. Uh, um, there will always be a final decision making. We can take all ideas into consideration and decide how we can move uh, forward. Of course, another challenge is uh, bias and discrimination, because as we diversify your team, uh, it's more possible to see more biases, more um, stereotypes, more harassment. Uh, you know, according to research, um, uh, more than 60% of workers have already witnessed or experienced discrimination in the workplace, whether this is uh, it's about age or about gender or anything else. Um, and of course, uh, this uh, discrimination can um, prevent employees from being creative, from being uh, uh, from making their authentic selves to work. So this unconscious bias and stereotypes uh, that could be also um uh, a place is a workplace where there is no room for uh, differing opinions where there is a weak leadership we could say 
En te, of een goede zee, dat is de most important one, is about communication. Communication issues, because uh, this can be very challenging many times. Uh, that could be language barriers, that could be um, a weakness to fully understand the constructions, that could lead to um, uh, a failure in the productivity and uh, uh, in communication. And uh, of course, uh, if, we talk, if um, we talk about communication, um, we can hire, I could say, suggest we can try to hire bilingual employees if it's possible. It's also a significant competitive advantage to hire employees with advanced bilingual abilities, especially if we talk about international organization. Uh, but we be, uh, be, become patient also with employees because this makes them a little time to, 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 uh, to adjust. And uh, um, if uh, we have, uh, we talk about a diverse team, of course, diverse employees have different ways of approaching the same um, concept and put forth the idea. So we have too many opinions. And um, of course, this is very valuable, as the previous speaker said, but uh, um, we need uh, um, to be very uh, careful. For instance, we can uh, select uh, some uh, um, high performing executives who will hear every opinion and make the final decision themselves. So it's not easy. Uh, of course, it's not easy. So we need a consensus that should be reached at the end. Um, a committee could evaluate all these options, identify the best one. Um, if, if I mention about the uh, bias and stereotypes, this way we can hire uh, managers that will be able to recognize all the signs of uh, biases. So uh, a diversity training, it's important. Uh, awareness training, um, which will help employees to understand that, that these differences between colleagues, that the, all these differences are actually precious and beneficial and, and there's nothing to worry about. Uh, and uh, of course, communicate our values, um, uh, our company values, um, and uh, uh, make it part of our brand name and of our reputation that I mentioned before. Um, so, um, of course, there are many, um, uh, we said that diversity workplace can bring uh, positive changes, but also has the uh, potential to introduce all these challenges. Uh, they can be avoided. <coughs> mention some examples, um, how to align diversity with our goals also is the main challenge, because creating um, an inclusive workforce that aligns with our goals is, is important in today's business world, creating a positive uh, working environment where uh, all employees can bring their authentic selves. It's not uh, easy. Um, and you know, uh, cultural insensitivity is one of these challenges that needs uh, concentrated efforts, such as that I said before, diversity um, training. Uh, because there will be many cultural misunderstandings nowadays, um, and uh, uh, it's not easy to handle all these uh, diverse talent. So diversity and inclusion must go hand in hand. Communicate this importance to our team, set expectations through a code of conduct that would be important to discuss our goals and progress. Um, and uh, uh, of course, uh, um, understand that the dynamics of diversity in work team helps the organization, of course, to manage all the consequences of diversity, both negative and positive. Um, and uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, the magic and uh, the value of this. Uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, having a diverse uh, teams in our company. Thank you. Thank you, dear Honorable, for for the inputs. And of course, uh, you are already articulated the discrimination, culture variance, communication barriers, and some other things. But in related with your comments, I would like to ask the question to my dear brother, Mohammed Jubai, from all the way from India, that do you really think that diversity creates the slower decision making? Please. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, you can you can share. Hello. Actually, your voice was breaking, mm -hmm. so can you repeat the question? Absolutely. <laughs> In related with the answer with my dear sister Rania Lempu, the question is to you. Do you really think that diversity creates slower decision making? Yeah. 
actually you know rania said already uh, rania already told about all the things and uh, yes diver promoting and supporting diversity you know within an orga organization is a crucial uh, for uh, fostering innovation and uh, improving employee morale and achieving long success as rania mentioned because uh, when we talk about diversity you know we set a clear vision and mission and uh, and lead we have to lead by example for example you know uh, uh you know leadership commitment when we talk about uh, leadership commitment ensure that uh, you know leadership is visibly committed to diversity and inclusion so their commitment sets the tone for the entire organization when we talk about the you know diversity uh, at any stage for example you know firstly what we can do about this so diversity in decision making is uh, in my opinion is the concept that decisions are made by a group of you know individuals with varying backgrounds and uh, they have different perspectives and uh, they have come from different different backgrounds and they have different experiences in their life so they can integrate all those things you know so this diversity can include uh, differences in race gender age and ethnicity and sexual orientation and the cultural background education so you know in decision making you know broader perspective will be there you know broader perspective individuals from diverse backgrounds you know uh, often have unique life experiences and viewpoints uh, when making decisions a diverse group can you know consider a wider range of possibilities and potential and results which can lead to more you know complete decision making or effective decision making and uh, you know it will enhance creativity like previous speaker was saying it will enhance the creativity and innovation because a diverse team is more likely to generate creative solutions to problems so it will definitely help in decision making and uh, reduce group thinking you know group think uh, is a phenomena in which members of a group you know conform to the op opinions or decisions of the majority and uh, diversity can you know uh, counteract you know group think by introducing uh, you know dissenting view and uh, encouraging healthy debate and uh, in decision making it will improve you know it definitely it will improve problem solving nature because diversity can lead to better problem solving as different individuals may approach problems from various angles they can see problems from various angles and include the chances of identifying and you know we can try to search different effective solutions for them and uh, better representation a diverse decision making group uh, can better represent the interest of a broader range of stakeholders ensuring that uh, decisions consider the needs and concerns of various communities and demographics and the uh, diverse teams often you know uh, yeah i'm concluding uh, diverse team often you know develop cultural competency which is the ability to under understand and work effectively and it will improve employee satisfaction and it is beneficial for market relevance so in overall in legal and ethical compliance it is important to note that the mere presence of diversity in decision making does not guarantee better outcomes but it will definitely inclusive processes that value and actively seek our diverse perspectives are the keys thank you thank you thank you dear brother yes i do agree with you and yes you are totally articulated that how actually diversity applies in the decision making so um, my question was that is that making i mean diversity create the slower decision making Yes, it make uh, it can be slower or it can be quicker. It can be vice versa. So, is the number of opinions are there because of the number of people and number of the uh, diverse people, diverse actuality, and some other things are also affect on the decision making. So, let's move forward. So, I'd like to call my honorable brother Tevitai Wadigan for answering the next question. That is. How can a leader and manager ensure that they are actively promoting and supporting diversity within their organization? 
Thank you so much for all the speakers and their and their various in-depth perspective about this uh, away some topic that is really ravaging the, the the whole world and is tearing the world apart indirectly. Yeah, for me, uh it's it starts with me. Okay. Now, as as leader in my own, in my in my in my own role, my my role is to ensure that I give everyone within my team equal opportunity to contribute their best. Okay. And in any situation that we find ourselves as leaders, it's important to, to work the talk in every decision that we are making, in every policy, in every policy that we are making, in every, in every uh in every standard that we are trying to create. Now, in my own organization in back in Africa, in I I have six uh, seven board members, and three of my board members in my organization are women. Why do we why do we do this? It's because we want to we want to practice what we say. Most leaders around the world today are they, they talk more about what they want to do, but in reality, we don't practice what we say. And it's important as leaders, before we can become an inspiration leader, we must tell ourselves why are we a leader at the first place. Are we in that role as leader to empower or to use power? Now, if we are in that role as leader to empower, it's our responsibility to promote diversity in context by empowering every one of our team members. For example, I have, I have two slots of training some, subordinate, some of my subordinates. Now, out of that two slots, I gave the two slots to two, to two, to two, to two men, right? They went for they went for the training, they come back, and then I told them that well, there is an opportunity for a group managing director of my organization, and I asked them that the two guys that went for training and a woman that has not gone for training sit down for the same test. How would the woman pass? She would never pass because I've created a block wall. For our from inception of the of the career pipeline. Now, for every leader in our career pipeline, we must create an avenue to develop same capacity competency for every member of our team, irrespective of their age, of their gender, of their of their ethics, of their of their nation. Without this, it's it's going to be difficult. And the problem that we are facing in our world today is most of our leaders before, they claim to be promoting diversity, but what they are actually promoting is a world that is tearing everyone apart. We are seeing they are creating enmity. They are creating a rivalry. They are, we are creating unwanted competitions that everyone is trying to protect his job. Diversity is not about protecting your job. Diversity is all about coming together to champion a sustained solution that involves everybody. It's important at this point that every leader make it a mantra to get everybody involved, irrespective of what they come for. Until leader commits to this, practice it, talk it, and are able to measure the impact of inclusiveness it's difficult for us to achieve it, but we are all responsible for this and we can achieve it. Such well defined uh, discussions, and really, you are focusing that is that you should be uh, actually undertaking, and we have to consider those things in our practical things as well. So, yes, uh, thank you so much, dear Honorable. And I can see the lot of comments in the social media. So I would like to address those comments. So even going to other live, uh, Bukola, my dear brother, focusing that wonderful panelist and Abdul Kareem constantly actually uh, inspiring us 
like uh, when when multiple solutions put together to solve a problem in the workplace, it makes the result outstanding with the next crisis, which is uh, absolutely agree with you. And also focus that it prevents the shallow outcome and subjective outcome, it also prevents biases. And it also makes the workers feel relevant and carry along in the workplace. It also shows that they are important and they can perform solution to any given issues. Yes, uh, thank you, my dear brother Abdul Karim, for being with us for the every single Facebook live show and some other programs. So, yes, they are all the listeners, all the viewers. Whoever watching me later on, I would like to, because we are talking about the uh, workplace diversity, we are already focusing on the, uh, the benefit of workplace diversity and some uh, crown is that better for the problem solving and decision making is or not. We also focus on some barriers, we also focus on giving some example of workplace diversity that is going on around the world right now. We also focus on some common challenges and I also focus on some as a leader or manager, how can I actually promote the workplace diversity uh, with the team with the organization. So all the things that we have discussed, you can even if, if you are missed, you can uh, see the Facebook live later on. And yes, before going to bed, I would like to ask every single panelist, please give one advice as a leader or owner of your organization regarding the diversity. So I would like to go first, my dear brother, Jibair from India. Mom, Jibair brother, yes, one advice as a leader. Uh, brother, you are muted. Uh oh, yes, brother. You know, my, okay, my advice is, my advice is, you know, as a, as a leader, you know, I have to lead by example, you know, senior leaders should, ex, you know, exemplify diversity and inclusion behaviors. I have to show this behavior firstly in me and uh, I will, I would be the ideal for my, you know, colleagues uh, in the diverse, uh, you know, environment and they must demonstrate their commitment through their actions and decisions because actions and decisions are important and uh, provide diversity and inclusion training for all employees not just management but uh, you know you know equal opportunities equity and ensure that everyone within the organization has equal and uh, equal opportunities for growth and development regardless their background or the caste and the religion or anything so this involves promoting you know diversity and inclusion and uh, you know so as a leader you know we have to set a clear vision and mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. So now I'd like to go for my dear sister on your life. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say that leaders must be accountable for creating this inclusive culture that embraces always different perspectives. They should not be, uh, they're not afraid of feedback, they should seek for <laughs> feedback. They should include uh, diverse hiring processes to attract and retain diverse talent pool. And the most important, I think, provide the regular training with diversity and inclusion. That would be awareness training, or skill building training, sensitivity training, uh, unconscious bias training, uh, diversity and inclusion policy training. All these uh, are important um, uh, for uh, uh, adopting this uh, um, uh, diversity policy. And uh, of course, I forgot to mention uh, that a great leader nowadays in the age of artificial intelligence should uh, embrace also technology Thank you, thank you. Yes, of course. You already mentioned some of some of the training should be actually conducted to make them to make them understand that what is uh, need to be ensured as a diversified people, diversified team within the organization. Thank you. So yes, the honourable dynamic leader. Thank you, Adigan brother. 
Okay, uh, for me, for me, I have no word to say. What I would just challenge everyone <laughs> is we, we are responsible for diversity. If we want to achieve diversity in our world, hi, the material the good, I must walk the talk. And I challenge everyone from Dr. Reina to, to Mohammed to Ambassador Nuruddin Ahmed that we need to play this night at I. Let's go together high. Hi. Pledge. <laughs> Sorry? Pledge. Pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. pledge. To promote diversity. Promote diversity. <laughs> promote in, my diversity. in my community. In, the, in my community. <laughs> Where I sit as a board member. <laughs> <laughs> and where I make decision in my religious setup. Where I sit in my religious setup, in our religious setup, to ensure that diversity is achieved. And together, we can make this world a better place if we can all walk the talk and embrace diversity not only promoting equality but at the same time it promotes equity thank you so much super super that's a great ending i have to say and yes everything comes from you whenever you are considering and talking about a lot of things please try to ensure yourself first then you can actually implement those in the within your nearest people nearest organization and some other places and of course, Jiva is a great diversified team. You know, in the in today's Facebook live show, we are also diversified. The Greece, India, UK, or Nigeria, or Bangladesh, the four diverse countries, four diverse people working with the Jiva. And that is actually the great example, leading by uh, example by leader. And <coughs> thank you, Dr. Dut. And thank you so much. All of the families yes. for being here. I want to say something here. before concluding. Yes, I want uh, sure, please, to say something ahead, before ahead. concluding. Okay. Yes, that um, sure, recently sure. I read the research which said that uh, nowadays um, the, the companies that will have the more competitive advantage are not the companies who promote problem solving or decision making or digitalization, things that the World Economic Forum represents as the most important. But those companies who will have, who will promote humanistic values, because they're hard to find nowadays. And this has to do with cultural competencies, with uh, empathy, with empowerment, with how we will be able to communicate, to collaborate effectively, work team, how to understand, appreciate differences. These are the workers of the future who will be competitive advantage for a company. <laughs> because they're hard to find. I so much. research. So humanistic values should go along with diversity and uh, uh, the new business landscape. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, wow, there's a lot of messages from a lot of uh, actually number of our panelists. And if if you are uh, actually avoid some technical issues, trust me, we're definitely going to learn something new in, in today's Facebook live show. And thank you so much, uh, uh, all the panelists. Thank you so much, whoever comments on the Viva and uh, platform. And thank you so much, whoever watching right now. We'll be watching later on. Till then, take care. Have a great night from Bangladesh. And good morning, good afternoon, and have a great day. Bye-bye.